Our second data collection method is via email. So using an email, which is an electronic message to collect some data. And at quite a basic level, you could just send an email asking for someone's opinion, say if you're collecting data about, say a product, you ask them for their opinion or just any information, right? You send an email asking the person for it. That's not a particularly sophisticated method. We could also, linking to us our first method using questionnaires, we could also contain a link to a web-based questionnaire, which is maybe a more common way of doing it, as opposed to just asking it in the email. We can also maybe attach a file for maybe a questionnaire to fill out. If it isn't web-based, it's just being sent via the web, and then you fill it out and send it back to the original sender. So we can use email to facilitate other collection methods, mostly questionnaires really, but we could just use email to ask questions um, in the first instance. Not really much more to say apart from just to evaluate email as a method. So what's really good about an email is you can send it to many people at once. Other forms of communication, like a text message, say, is not designed to go to many people at once. You might have a group chat, but that's not huge. An email can go to thousands and thousands of people if they're on an email list. And as a from a perspective of you using email to collect data, it's very easy to send an email to loads of people. It's cheap, you don't have to pay per email. And also, it's quick, right? If you are printing out questionnaires and sending them as hard copies, you might have to post for questionnaire, which will take maybe a day at least. But an email is sent straight away, it's received pretty much straight away too. And also, maybe stating the obvious, that most people have email addresses. Not everyone has got WhatsApp or iMessage. An email, most people have got an email address and so can receive your email, which has a link or a question in it. But what's not so good is very similar to my previous points for questionnaires, but if you are not providing a limited choice set of options, you'd have to analyze all the open-ended answers manually. So you'd have to read all of your replies to the email to pick out the useful bits of data. Also, fundamental to how emails work and just to how people, how humans are regarding emails, people can ignore them, right? Not everyone reads or checks their emails. Often, I certainly don't always check my emails. And not, some people don't have email addresses, right? Most people do, some people don't. But even if they have got an email address and are checking it, sometimes your email could get sent to a spam folder. A spam folder being where all of the emails which are just sent to any address just to try and sell stuff or try and maybe even be phishing emails are sent here. They're not usually read by people if they go to the spam folder. So your email may not actually get received by the person and it can be quite hard for you to know if they have read your email or not. A third common way of collecting data in IT is via sensors. So a sensor is a device which can detect a change in its environment. And this change in the environment can be collected and that's the data we are gonna be collecting, right? So change in environment, things like a motion sensor. So something like this you often see in toilets um, and also maybe outside a garage where you have like a light which goes on if this gets triggered, right? It's detecting a change in the motion. So it's trying to figure out if there's any movement around it. That's what it's detecting. It could be collected if you particularly wanted to. Something like a seismometer, which collects data about tremors in the ground. So earth, for earthquakes, really. I'm sure you've seen these in movies, right? If you have a jagged line, if it suddenly gets really jagged, you might have an earthquake. That's collecting data about the shakiness of the ground. And a third example, a traffic light sensor, so very similar to motion sensor really, detecting if a car is in front of the traffic light and so it won't be on green if no one is, is waiting for it. All of these are just devices, so the traffic light sensors at the top here, devices which are just sat there and are left to collect often just one distinct change in the environment, in the surroundings. Okay, so let's evaluate sensors. So what's good is that once you set them up, they can be left alone. There's not someone from a council sat next to every traffic light checking to see if it's working. Um, you can be left alone once you set them up, that's the idea. Also, in theory, the data they collect is accurate, so they are reading the correct values. So say a temperature sensor is gonna be more accurate than someone just stood there with a thermometer checking the temperature. The sensors can be very, very precise and very accurate with their readings, in theory. They also can be quite cheap, especially longer term, right? Once you buy the device, once you buy the actual sensor, 
you don't have to do anything else apart from pay for electricity, which is not going to be huge because they're very, very simple devices. They're not using a ton of electricity because they're often doing a very, very simple task. So in terms of what's not so good, if you have a sensor in a bad position, that might mean no data is collected. If you have a traffic light sensor and suddenly a tree branch grows in front of it, it's not going to collect data about the motion, it's not going to work. And because you've left it alone, you might not realise. Also, you can tamper with sensors. So a common one is a sensor to detect how much electricity you're using in your home, like a meter, can be tampered with to try and reduce their bills. So someone could play around with a sensor to try and alter the data it's collecting. Of course, if someone is deliberately changing the values, that means it's no longer accurate. So you can no longer trust the values collected by the sensor. And they need to have electricity at all times, right? So they can't work by magic. They need to have some electricity either plugged in to the mains or via a battery, which will need to be recharged somehow. And finally, because you are leaving them often, you're not checking on them all the time, they may stop working without you realizing. If they suddenly have power, if there's a power cut and the sensor stops working, you may not realize until you go and look at the data and establish that actually it stopped collecting it two weeks ago. You may not realize unless you have some alert set up. 